France, a land full of beauty and amazing food. Most people immediately think of Paris, the Eiffel Tower, the Côte d'Azur or Saint Mont Michel, and rightly so, but there's so much more to discover. In this video I will show you some well-known but also lesser known places of beautiful France. Pont d'Arc. The Pont d'Arc is a large natural bridge located in the south of France in the Ardèche département. The whole surrounding area is very nice in summer to swim in the river, but it's also a popular place for canoeing and kayaking. The Pyrenees. The Pyrenees is a mountain range straddling the border of France and Spain with the microstate of Andorra sandwiched in between. With its heavily natural setting and sacred pilgrimage sites, the Pyrenees is a soul-inspiring destination. Worth a visit is the UNESCO World Heritage Site Cirque de Gavarnie, which is set amidst peaks and sheer waterfalls. Also worth a visit is to take the cable car up to Pic du Demi de Bigorre at 2877 meters where you can enjoy a 360 degree view. It's also an exceptional place for stargazing. Another must visit in the Pyrenees is the pilgrim city of Lourdes. Every year millions of pilgrims participate in the spiritual activities at Lourdes, which makes it one of the most important Catholic pilgrimage destinations in the world. Also, why not visit another country on this trip and make a stop at Andorra, where you can have the best of two worlds combined, French and Spanish delights. So you end up having jamón and camembert for lunch and a creme brulee crema catalana version for dessert. It's also the perfect stop to stock up some wine, cheese, jamón and other delights for reasonable prices because they only have a 4.5% VIT. Now it's all about wine in Bordeaux in saint emilion The wine metropolis Bordeaux, a must visit, is the Wine Museum and Le Bazin de Lumière. Le Bazin de Lumière is a World War II U-boat bunker now used for the very impressive light show. The UNESCO World Heritage Village saint emilion Bordeaux red wine from saint emilion which is made mainly from the Melot and Cabernet Frac grapes is world famous. saint emilion is situated on two limestone hills on the banks of the Dordogne, surrounded by prime vineyards. Here are the perfect conditions for growing wine. Limestone soil, sun, wind and great storage facilities. Because the entire region around saint emilion consists of underground caves. I can highly recommend a tour on a wine chalet, where you can also stock up your wine cellar. Another attraction is the monolithic church, which is the largest underground church hewn from a single stone in Europe.
Dune du Pila. The largest shifting dune in Europe. The dune moves 4 meters along the sea every year and has been for 8,000 years. The dune is nestled between the Atlantic Ocean, an enormous pine forest, the Aracan Bay, a sandbank and a peninsula. Most people only climb up the dune from the main entrance, relax at the top and go back, so the first peak tends to be crowded. I highly recommend to walk along the dune to escape the crowds. After a few minutes you will be completely alone. The Dupe Departement. The Dupe Departement is full of gorgeous villages. The small town of Baume-les-Messieurs is one of the most beautiful villages in France and is spectacularly situated in the Cirque of the Jura. Another gorgeous village is Lod, which is also listed among the most beautiful villages in France. Although Lod is small and the visit does not take very long, the ancient houses along the river creates a very lovely scene. Close by is also the pretty town of Ornon. The Dupe Departement is not overcrowded, even in summer, and is still a real insider tip for everyone who is looking for peace and a deal. Mont Saint-Michel Washed by the sea, surrounded by legends, the world-famous monastery mountain in the mudflats is a work of art. But be prepared for massive crowds of people. I can highly recommend to come as early as possible, especially during summer, because later it's almost impossible to enjoy it. There are so many people that you can hardly walk or move. I also recommend to book your tickets online in advance to avoid queuing up. My highlight was to watch from the walls above as the tide comes in and washes everything away. But also the guided tour through the Watt. There are different options for hikes, but I love the one to the neighboring island Tombolon because you walk away from the crowds and you feel more isolated and the view of Mont Saint-Michel while walking away and back to it is breathtaking. D-Day in the Normandy The Normandy landings were the landing operations and associated airborne operations in 1944 of the Allied invasion of Normandy in Operation Overlord during World War II. Codenamed Operation Neptune and often referred to as D-Day, it was the largest seaborne invasion in history. From Allied and German cemeteries to fortifications, memorials and museums, Normandy has such a wide range of D-Day sites you can visit. The Côte d'Albatre, or the Alabaster Coast in English. 
The Côte d'Ipatre is part of the French coast of the English Channel. It takes its name from the wide view of its high chalk cliffs, including those of Idrita, which is the most famous place off the Alabaster coast. It is part of the same geological system as the wide cliffs of Dover on the far side of the English Channel. My favorite French village is located in the Alabaster coast, called Vol les Roses. It is a picturesque village of typical half-timbered cottages and lots of ancient unspoiled charm. The Vol, which flows through the village, is France's smallest river. There is a good reason why so many painters, poets and writers fell in love with this place. Also nice is the city of Deauville and saint valery Co. Brittany. Brittany is the northwesternmost region of France and is a hilly peninsula jutting into the Atlantic. The long rugged coastline is studded with pretty seaside resorts such as the Chic Cancale where you should definitely try some oysters or Benodet. Another must-see city is Saint-Malo, which is built on rocks in the English Channel. My favorite region was Croissant. Landscapes alternate between spectacular cliffs, heathland, Turkey's ocean, and beautiful beaches and sunsets. The Côte de Granite Rose is also pretty and famous for its unusual reddish sand and rocks of the same color. But I like Brittany so much because there were still many beautiful lonely places that were not overrun with fellow tourists like you have in the Normandy. Chansey Islands Chansey is a group of small islands, islets and rocks off the coast of Normandy in the English Channel. It lies 17 kilometers from Granville. These islands see some of the greatest tidal ranges in the world, up to 15 meters. When the sea is out, there are 365 islets, but that drops to just 52 at high tide. The result is a truly mesmerizing, ever-changing panorama. You can visit Chansey via boat from Conville on a day trip and you will surely have an amazing time out. Rock around the island, take a swim, enjoy fresh seafood and watch the tides. Biarritz and Bayonne Biarritz is a city on the Atlantic coast and the French Basque Country, in southwestern France. Biarritz is known for wild surfing beaches, 
white houses with colorful shutters, haute cuisine and haute brie. I can't explain what it's about this city, but I love the laid-back atmosphere of this place, despite being a luxurious seaside tourist destination. The close-by neighbor city Bayonne is also worth a visit, especially during the Fête de Bayonne, which is the largest festival in France with over 1 million visitors yearly. Everybody is dressed up in white and red and celebrates for 5 days straight. If your stomach is up for it, you can visit a traditional bar fight as well. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you soon!